Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube series on how to create a PC gaming console. In the last episode, we looked at the end result of the project of running functional PC gaming and home theater console. Before we move along to the parts list and the software setup, I'd like to talk a little bit about alternatives that are available. For a lot of people out there, the idea of building a gaming PC to put in your living room is an alien concept. Even though the case that we're using is roughly the size of an Xbox One console, it's still a personal computer, and the idea of putting a power-hungry gaming PC alongside your cable box and your stereo isn't exactly ideal. So, you should know that there are a few alternatives out there that can allow you to play PC games in your living room without the need for an actual PC gaming system. The most cost-effective way to accomplish this is by using Steam's in-home streaming. That's a feature built into the Steam application that allows any Steam client to stream games to any other Steam client, so long as both clients are on the same local network. The in-home streaming feature allows you to stream any game, not just Steam games. So this means that you can stream your Origin games, your Uplay games, your GOG games, really any game that you have you can stream. Even your emulated games you can stream as well. If you want to see this in action, take a look at the description of this video for a link to a few videos that I've created where I've streamed games to all kinds of devices. There's a video of me streaming a game to a MacBook. There's a video of me streaming a Nintendo GameCube game called Animal Crossing for my gaming piece to my living room for my daughter to play. So there's a lot of samples to look at. In order to configure Steam to stream a game that isn't available on the Steam store, you do have to use a feature in Steam called Add a Non-Steam Game to Library. Uh, it's very simple, but uh, once you've done that, the non-Steam game will look and act just like any other Steam game. Really, it'll be indistinguishable from games that you purchase from the Steam store. So if you're interested in streaming games, um, there are a few things that you're going to need to know uh, and that you'll need to have. Uh, the first thing you're going to need to have is a gaming PC to actually run the game and you're also going to need some kind of client that can receive the game. So on screen here you see a couple of the media centers that I've used over the last decade or so. The PC on the left is an old Atom based PC that I used to run Kodi Media Center uh, back when it was called XBMC Media Center. That PC though is so old that its onboard VRAM is too low to run the Steam client so I couldn't stream games to it. So to deal with that, a few years ago, I replaced the PC on the left with the PC on the right. The PC on the right is an Acer, and it costs about $200. It does have enough VRAM to run Steam. I think the minimum VRAM that you need to run Steam is either 256 or 512 megabytes. Uh, pretty much all modern machines today will have enough VRAM to at least run the Steam client. Anyway, all the videos on this channel that demonstrate in-home streaming are using the PC that you see on the right as the client, and that PC is connected to my living room television. There are other devices you can use, but I haven't tested them. <clears throat> I've read that you can use Android devices, you can use all kinds of devices to act as the Steam client. I've always just stuck with regular PCs, especially the really cheap pre-built ones like that $200 Acer. The streaming feature does work very well, and it's very simple to use. All you need to do is power on both the PCs. The living room PC is going to automatically detect the gaming PC. And whenever you select a game from the living room, you'll see a new option in Steam that allows you to stream the game. That's really all there is to it. it it's fairly simple. I do have to warn you, though, there are some major drawbacks to this type of setup. First, you're going to need a wired Ethernet connection between the two PCs. Wireless connections, they're just not reliable and they introduce some latency, too much latency. Uh, next, you need to understand that the streaming client is basically just controlling the gaming PC remotely. So, you know, you're going to get some level, some degree of latency, no matter what. Also, the video that you see on the television is really all that's being streamed. So there is compression that is going on behind the scenes to, to stream that video. If you're the kind of gamer where you want the highest fidelity graphics and visuals and you're not willing to deal with any sort of artifacting or anything like that, 
this setup might not be ideal for you. In my tests, the, it, the picture is very good, but there is definitely a difference between what the game looks like natively and what the game looks like being streamed. But really for me, I think the biggest drawback in my opinion is the fact that anytime something goes wrong, you have to go to the gaming PC and deal with it. So for example, a lot of games have these stupid launcher programs where you have to start the game from your living room and then you have to go upstairs or wherever your gaming PC is and you have to click the correct buttons on the PC to start the game. Then you have to go back downstairs and make sure that everything worked. Uh, you know, and all of this has to be done before a timeout threshold or the streaming process fails and you have to start it all over again. But don't let me discourage you. The streaming does work very well and we've used it here for years. It's really only been in the last few months when we made the decision to fully commit to couch PC gaming and build a standalone gaming PC to put in the living room. I just really felt that, you know, before committing to a reasonably expensive gaming PC to put in your living room, that I should talk a little bit about cost effective alternatives that you can use like game streaming. If you already have a gaming PC, uh, this may be a very viable option for you instead of building another PC to put in your living room. So I hope the video has been helpful or informative in some way. Uh, I look forward to the next video. So please join me where I'm going to try to lay out all the components in the build and talk a little bit about what parts I used and why I use those parts.